What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how quarterbacks can stop missing throws high. So we're going to be talking about what causes a quarterback to have a super high release point, throw the ball over the wide receiver's head, which can lead to a lot of inconsistencies, being inaccurate, and a lot of interceptions. So the first clip we're looking at here is from Jimmy Garoppolo, and um, he misses this throw flat out, and it just goes over the, uh, the wide receiver's head, and it's ultimately picked off, right? So let's talk about why he missed it, how the biomechanics of this motion is what led to this very, very high ball. Okay, so let's watch it full speed. Now, again, he's got a guy in his face, but again, just throws the ball a little bit too high. Receivers open, the ball should have gotten there, but just misses the throw, right? And again, made the right decision. Everything was great about this, but the biomechanics of his throw is what caused it, right? So there's a whole, the whole point of playing the quarterback position mechanically, it comes down to the lower half, right? Your arm just kind of happens, right? Your lower body is what makes the throw. You transferring weight to your front leg, you getting your hips to rotate through on the throw. That's what allows you to be that efficient rotational action athlete. Now, there's two ways that a quarterback's going to rotate. He's either going to rotate at his hips or he's going to rotate at his upper half. But if you simply do not have that hip rotation, that's when you start to dip your front elbow. You lead with your front elbow and you swing it down and that's what affects your release point, right? You want to think of every quarterback, like think of it like, like just this straight up line, like this is the throwing arm that I just drew and this is the off arm. Now, if that off arm dips down, right? That's what causes your release to get pushed up, right? So it all has to do with this left arm of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, when he goes to throw, you see how that left elbow starts to swing down, right? You see how the elbow swings here. It doesn't stay like at his chest. He's not rotating at his hips because his base got too wide and that's what leads to the front elbow pulling down, right? So let me explain. So anytime that a quarterback is throwing, like you never want your back foot to be outside of your back shoulder, right? You want your base to be strong. You want to have a decently wide wider base. You don't want your feet super close together, but you never want your back foot outside of your frame. Because when you go to transfer weight, essentially taking that weight from the back leg and shifting it to the front leg, that's what allows your front hip to open up. Think of it like a golfer. Think of it like a baseball player. When they go to rotate through, they're just, they're not stepping super long. They don't have a super wide base. They're just shifting their weight, pivoting off the back foot. And that gets their front hip, their front hip to open up and their back hip to drive through. But when your base is too wide, that's what happened. You end up pushing and you get that angle with your back foot. So what ends up happening is your front hip will lock out and you don't get that rotation with your front hip. And you see how when Jimmy Garoppolo goes to throw, the sequence of the throw needs to be front stride, then hips, then shoulders, then ball. The hips, the football wants to chase the hips. But when we push off of that back leg and my base gets too wide, that's when the hips don't rotate through. That's when the elbow swings down and that's what pushes my release at this very high point. You see how when he throws that back foot foot never pivots over. There's no rotation from the hips. This is solely an arm throw, right? And this ball did not get tipped. This ball was just a weaker throw where we missed high simply because we had that too wide of a base and I wasn't able to transfer my weight. So we have to make sure, fellas, what causes my release to be consistent is when my hips rotate through. Because when your hips rotate through, and we're going to take a look at a good example here from Aaron Rodgers, when your hips are able to rotate through, you don't feel the need to swing the front elbow down. You're able to just rotate, right? You're able to rotate your hips. You're able to keep your front elbow, your front arm, exactly where Garoppolo has it right here. You don't have to pull down because the pull down will give you power. It's just your release point is going to be inconsistent. And that's what will cause us to miss high because my release point gets pushed up. I release it a little bit too early and that ball will sail on me. So let's watch thing again, full speed. So it all starts with your base, fellas. That back foot has to be closed down. So when I go to transfer my weight, my back leg doesn't stay way behind. My hips can rotate through. Weight goes to the front leg and I don't feel the knee need to swing my elbow out of there. Let's watch it again full speed. Just base got a little bit wide from Garoppolo there, kind of pushed the ball, swung the elbow. Now we're going to look at a clip here from Aaron Rodgers and what it should look like moving around in the pocket. But before we get into that, fellas, I want to talk to you about a great opportunity this offseason we are offering. We are going to be traveling out to nine different cities across the United States for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So we're going to be coming out to Phoenix, Arizona first, then Houston, Texas, then Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those nine cities or would like to travel out and get some great work in with myself and my staff of coaches for two whole days, check out that very first link in the description below. Now, some of the, one of the common questions we get asked is, how is your camp different? What's going to be different about this from just some regular camp that they have every year is that we are limiting spots to only 10 to 12 quarterbacks and wide receivers. So it's going to be small. And the reason why we do that is because we actually want to teach you. That's what 
coaching is all about. That's what training is all about, is actually teaching you the right way to do things, correcting your form, and explaining to you what you're doing wrong. So many people do it incorrectly. They put kids through drills. They just put them through cone drills, hurdle drills, whatever, and that's fine, but there's no teaching. We're actually here to teach you guys. So if you guys want to get one of those 10 to 12 spots that we were offering, check out that very first link in the description below. We would absolutely love to have you out to one of our off-season camps this year. Let's get back to this video. So now, next things that we want to talk about is, again, we're going to take a look at Rodgers and how his back leg is in the correct position and what this can lead to with your upper half, right? So he's dropping back. He's going to, I'm going to play a full speed. He's able to hit this corner route, and this is a dart, right? We could, This is a throw you could very easily miss high, right? Co man coverage, running a corner route. A lot of quarterbacks will sail that thing because they try to put too much touch on it. They don't get their hips into the throw, but he is so dang consistent because of how disciplined his front side is, right? So let's equate this to everything we just talked about, right? Look where his back foot is. Where's his back foot? His back foot underneath the back shoulder. So when he goes to transfer his weight forward, you see how that back leg never extends. He's able to actually pivot through. He's able to actually drive the knee through and look what his front hip does. His front hip is actually able to rotate through and look at where his release point is. His release point is nice. That's where his release point is, is nice and square. There's no dip of the elbow. He's not dipping his head out of there too lean out of there. And that is solely translated from the base from where he was with that back foot because everybody knows how to transfer their weight. I'm sure everybody's been playing the quarterback position long enough to have seen those, you know, hip drills that Dak Prescott made famous, that Drew Brees likes to do, Jameis Winston those weight transfer drills. Everybody knows how to do that stuff and knows what it's for, but how does that actually apply to a game situation throw? And when you could get your weight to transfer through, when you're able to get your hips to rotate through like this, you don't feel the need to swing the elbow because that's where your power is coming from. If you were playing baseball and somebody told you to swing the bat, but you're not allowed to move your back foot, you're going to swing the bat with your shoulders, right? So when your base gets too wide, and somebody tells you to throw the ball, you're not transferring any weight because your base is so wide. So what are you going to do? You're going to swing the elbow because you know you have to throw it hard. That's just how the body works. It makes up for the lack of hip rotation. So when you could get your back foot into the correct spot and you know how to transfer your weight to the front leg and get your hips to rotate through rather than your shoulders, you're going to have more power on the ball. Your release point will be more consistent. So you will have velocity and consistency on your throws rather than just velocity. And maybe you put a good throw one time by dipping the elbow and then maybe you don't but it's inconsistent this motion right here you being able to get your back foot under your frame transfer your weight get your hips to go will give you the consistent release point so i don't push it super high and then it just comes down to wherever you are flicking that wrist that's where that ball is going to shoot let's watch the thing again full speed one more time both of these movements too fellas off a of pocket movement off of moving around in the pocket stepping up stepping to the side your base has to be efficient no matter where you move so many people don't get that they they could throw routes all day long routes versus air and, and that's all their coach makes them do. That's all their trainer ever makes them do. But you got to be able to move in the pocket by time. They say something like 70% of the time in the NFL, I'm not even talking high school or college, in the NFL, they say 60 to 70% of the time, the quarterback is doing something other than the prescribed three-step hitch, shuffle hitch, five-step hitch. He is having to move around in the pocket and buy time for his receivers, especially when it's man coverage. But we have to be able to efficiently do that. And this is not something you could think about in the game. This is what's repped out in this time of the year, the off season, so you build these good habits. When you get into a game situation, you can let that ball rip. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Rogers having the back leg under his frame, transferring the weight, letting the hips shoot him through so he could have a consistent and accurate release point. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any kind of questions about anything we covered on this video, don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section below. Would love to um, you know, get any kind of feedback from you guys. I always appreciate it. And again, fellas, if you're local to one of those nine cities that we are traveling to this offseason for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training clinics check out that very first link in the description below we'd love to have you out if you're local or would like to travel down but like i said spots are limited our newark new jersey camp is almost completely sold out along with our houston texas and phoenix arizona camp so again 10 to 12 spots per position we're actually going to coach you guys and help you get better check out that very first link below i'll see you guys next time